Hello everybody! Welcome to another Sunday Fun Day and yeah, we still don't give a shit about Toy Story 4. As you can see, we went and saw Child's Play, the remake of the er, film by the same name. And just to let y'all know a little bit about Child's Play history and everything, I will try to lead us off actually for this change because I actually am a fan of the series. I remember the original. Well, Brad Dorff is still one of the best voice actors, I think, because of his performance of Chucky. Just because he can do a lot of weird little voices and then just be a maniacal psychopath that rivals on Freddy Krueger levels of just insanity. Megan, uh, I think, has never really seen but, like, one. <laughs> and that was, what, Brian and Chucky? I was I've seen Brian and Chucky, and I think I've seen the beginning scene of the original, play. yeah, the first original Child's Play where he gets into shoot out with cops, gets mortally wounded. I would say fatally injured, mortally wounded, whatever you want to call it, yeah. and <laughs> grabs a nearby doll and it's like, I put the power in you. Yeah, he's in like voodoo magic to transfer a soul so he doesn't die. Like, okay. Yeah. Um. So I will go ahead and actually start with a positive. For this movie it does actually try to do something a little bit different first off we don't have the voodoo magic we don't have any real weirdness per se it for lack of a better way to say it tries to make it a little bit more realistic i would say it's not really magic it's more coding yeah it's a corrupted computer code by a person who unfortunately looks like he has a amazon area manager over him <laughs> Yeah, it's just this poor Vietnamese dude who's kind of daydreaming. Yeah, it's true. I just spit on myself. <laughs> and he's, you know, just kind of off in his own world that just has this hairy manager just chew his like, ass out for no reason. He's like, I told you what, I, what would happen if I caught you daydreaming. Oh, you're worthless. Finish this and then leave. Yeah, and then you're fired. Uh. He's like, back on the streets where I found you. And it's like, yeah, so the guy. Hey, Amazon. Yeah, it's like, hey, Amazon. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, yeah, that happens, and then he decides, I'm going to rewrite his code, and he re pretty much removes all the safety parameters. He just kind of, like, to the to the boss and company. Yeah, and then he kills himself at the after that. It's the end of the Vietnamese dude who doesn't even have a name. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it may seem like it's a coding issue, which, as it turns out, it is. Mm-hmm. And I saw them, like... Oh, don't tell me his spirit is going to go into the doll. And thankfully, it doesn't get that silly. And yeah, it's like we don't, we don't take that turn. Yeah, and thankfully, that's actually something I will give the movie. It does try to make it a little bit more believable. I mean, still, it's a killer doll. I wouldn't mind as much that kind of a, not a twist, but... Swerve. Yeah, more like I wouldn't mind that direction, because there are a lot of uh, Asian cultures, more like Japanese, mm -hmm. but that you know, if you die in a violent way, your spe spirit is tied to the place to like a place or object or something. Like so, there's kind of precedent for it, but at the same time, it's like knowing what I know about the original Child's Play, it's like, well, then why does it have to be? Remade, remade yeah. if you're gonna go with the possession thing, you're just like oh, it's a factory worker, not some random criminal. It's like, mm. but it's thankfully they avoid that. Yeah, I will just give them this much. It's at least a more unique change, and yeah. it's like okay, I see reason why all technically kind of changed a few things. That being said, I give it props for that. The execution's fucking terrible, and this movie's not good at all. Oh. Uh, first off, everybody who's watched the original Child's Play knows that the movie, it's a little on the hammy side. It's a little campy, to put it nicely. But there was actually some terror here and there, especially since the original draft for a while, what they shot for a bit was that Andy was the killer. It was just that he pretty much was having like a personality issue, which would have been kind of dumb because it's kind of been there, done that somewhat. 
But at the same time, it would have been still kind of a clever twist. In fact, I think nowadays would be considered a very smart twist. Here, there is no twist other than the fact that this doll is just crate or it's corrupted by its messed up code. And so because of that, it does messed up things. It kills a cat because, of course, we need to have a pet death. And in fact, at one point, it looks a little like rough what they're doing with it. the actual cat. It doesn't look like a puppet. Like you're supposed to be strangling the cat because the cat's supposedly an asshole, even though it just kind of is a dick to him once. Yeah, like kind of scratches him as he's reaching for something next to the cat. And then Andy... I'm like, well, he hurt you. Like, yeah, and it shows him kind of choking the cat, and it's it looks a little... Like, you can yeah. see the cat. It's like, okay, dudes, like, I know what y'all are trying to get. Yeah, you can use a fake cat or else I'm going to fucking murder you. <laughs> yeah, like, y'all easily could have used a puppet. Well, yeah. animatronic. Though, if I'm going to also hit on something that... The movie does do also well. It actually does not tend to stray with too much CGI. There is not a ton of CGI with Chucky. I, I fear there was going to be a shit ton of. Like, there's some, and it obviously looks really, really bad. And, in fact, there's, like, this whole, like, end sequence, there's quite a bit of CGI, and it all looks terrible. Because they spent about $14 on it. <laughs> but most of Chucky is a puppet. He, or a uh, animatronic, in a way. Not the... I'm not saying like in story wise and on the way, but in actual real life, like the actual behind the scenes of the camera. <laughs> they use practical effects, is what he's There saying. we go. Brain is not working. So I give them kudos there. <laughs> <laughs> so I give them kudos on actually having a practical effect, you know, Chucky. It looks terrible. It just like the CGI, it looks half ass. It, like, they're, I get they're trying to make it creepy, but. It's the points where it's like all the dolls look like this. At least the original Chucky, he got menacing whenever he made faces and stuff like that and began to freak the fuck out and all this. Like, he was legitimately menacing, but when he was just a doll, he just looked like a regular doll. Here, it looks like something you would use to scare your kids out of having sex before marriage. It is a frightening looking thing. Thing. It's like, why the fuck would anybody want this? Yeah, it's kind of creepy. Yeah, it's a lot weird looking. And, again, like I said, hey, kudos for practical effects, but could y'all spend a little bit more money on it? Because it just, it just looks bad. And, go ahead. I was going to say that, uh, getting back to something you were kind of talking about earlier, yeah, they took this a little bit too seriously. I mean, Mark Hamill's performance as Chucky, like, he's a bit campy, especially really towards the end. Yeah, he's just pretty much just being <laughs> villain cliches. Yeah, he's just like, like, okay, can we just, like, do I have to return you to the mental hospital you clearly escaped from? All right, thanks, Joker. Yeah, he's, like, he's very, like, hee <laughs> hee, like, he's very maniacal and just insane in the membrane. Wait Sorry. for that. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I guess Mark Hamill didn't really get the memo that they were taking it way too seriously. Because there were a number of opportunities that he could have spouted off, you know, cheesy little serial killer one-liners. But he didn't. It sort of had it at points. Like, there was... Like, the whole thing is actually that, you know, anybody who's an, who's trying to be Andy's best friend, he tries to kill that kind of Or anyone who's, you know... Trying to get close to him or hurts Andy. Yeah, it was like being an asshole. Yeah, I would have liked if they went more with the whole, you know, anybody who's wanted to be his best friend. It's like, that would have been more of a difference than the original. That would have really... Because Chucky's pretty much got this, like, possession control issues. Yeah, very possessive. It was like, oh, you're my best friend. Mm-hmm. In fact, that even comes up as a plot point, strange enough. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's like, like at one point he kills this one lady with a car. You've probably seen the thing. It's really stupid looking. <laughs> like, it, you could tell, again, they didn't have a budget because they couldn't really crash a car good. It's like, go talk with Trauma. They'll tell you how to be able to do a movie on a budget of $120. And, you know, loose change that Lloyd Kaufman happened to have. <laughs> But 
during that, it's like, here's your final stop. It's like, okay, that's, uh, this is, this is, there's a little cliche, a little, little one-liner thing. Like, hey, hey, hey. I don't mind that. In fact, I wouldn't have minded a lot more of these one-liners. Like, he kills Jack Black, of course. You all see that in the trailer. I almost give away the entire kill. Mm -hmm. Trevor ends up you know, pretty much going dick first into a uh, table saw. Yeah. Was it not chainsaw? I was like, yeah. Cable song. And there's just, he doesn't get to do any of those lines. Like, that's the thing. It's like so much of this, it feels cheap and kind of cheesy. All right, once you realize, all right, this movie's cheap and cheesy, let's go whole hog. Let's go cheap and cheesy. Like, they even feature a cheesy horror movie within the movie. And yeah. It's like, okay, Chucky's kind of watching this. Like, how is he not taking more inspiration? From that. Yeah, and you would have figured he would have just done some more of that. And they would have went that whole hog. But instead, the movie constantly feels like it's holding itself back from going the whole distance. Turns out not very common with Men in Black International. In a weird, twisty way. <laughs> it has an identity crisis that really makes it a troublesome film to watch. But because of the fact that it sometimes is a little cheesy and a lot of times is not and it's trying to take just very fucking seriously it's just it begins to feel very tedious for lack of a better way mm -hmm. the first like 30 minutes is really lame and kind of tame and you can and also the movie is fucking predictable as hell i'm gonna say they're like most if not all the kills where it's like oh this person's gonna die uh now this person's gonna you know, okay She's buying it next. Yeah, this yeah. person's dead. This person's dead next. This person's gonna die. That person's not dead. And they're actually gonna be this yeah. person. Okay, cool. <laughs> I think one of them we were supposed to have sympathy for, but yeah, I was like y'all build him up to be such a freaking asshole. Yeah, like that. It's like yeah, like we're even talking about with Jack Black. He's in this movie for like ten minutes, and that's including overall. his. Yeah, that's like including the prolonged death scene and it's like it wants to be this ultra gore fest but it keeps holding itself back i'm guessing mpaa probably said no you'd be an nc-17 if you did that but at that point just release this direct to netflix thing i mean you didn't spend obviously that much money so fuck it why release in theaters if you know it's like it would be better just released unrated on you know hulu netflix all these other stuff because Obviously, this is not a, it's not a good movie. It's too predictable. I mean, Megan Constant was guessing, oh, this person, I was like, yep, that person's going to buy it. This is what this is going to happen. This person's going to die next. Mm -hmm. The only thing I couldn't have predicted was the fact these kids were complete and utter idiots and sometimes had just, I guess, the total upper body strength of a toddler. Because, like, at one point, like, near the end, Chucky is kind of like over Andy holding a knife to him and he's like and he's kind of like sitting on him and it's like Andy has shown that he's able to hold Chucky down pretty easily by himself it's not like you got a goddamn gorilla on your chest pick him up pull his arms off anything it's a doll for crying out loud <laughs> at least with child's play the original of course they're Obviously, Chucky was kind of invincible. I mean, he got lit on fire, and it took a while for him to finally kill his ass. And even then, most of his kills, they're hit and runs, you know? He just kind of quickly slashed somebody or caught him always off guard. Here, he's usually not doing that, or he's doing a stupid E.T. thing where... Yeah, how yeah. he'll control stuff, he'll his finger lights up, it looks exactly like E.T. Yeah, he's supposed to be connected to all these smart devices, like... Oh, turning on the TV. Oh, changing the channel. Oh, drawing something on the TV for you. Like, oh, it's like, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a little ad. It's at, Amazon. At, <laughs> at the beginning of the movie. Kind of telling you about this particular product. Yeah, it's it's Amazon Echo on, on you know, steroids. Steroids, yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah, it's, what she was saying is like, just, you know, throw them all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just made me think of uh, Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister talking about the original Child's Play, saying, people, it's a doll. Step on it. It's over. Yeah. It's like, 
like at one point they have trouble with Chucky or like the kids it takes three of them for some reason to hold down this doll it's like like they're trying to exercise it yeah and then they all they do is they pull out its battery it's like why not smash the thing yeah, yeah I know it's freaking insane because it left the head of like this kid his mom, who's played by Aubrey Plaza, that's the biggest... Number of things. Just... Yeah, she's been kind of a bit player in a bunch of different things. She looks like Olivia Munn. <laughs> that's the best thing I can describe Actually, her. Actually, to me, she looks more like uh, Linda Cardellini. Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> uh, Hawkeye's wife. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so... Cool story, bro. <laughs> cool story, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh... Yeah, she's having, or she's sleeping with him, and he, and supposedly Andy has issues with this guy, Shane? It, yeah, Shane. And it turns out he's an asshole, and that's the thing, almost everybody in this movie was an asshole. Yeah, it's like, it was not really explained, like, what his deal is with this guy, until, like, he's, like, shown down, and he's like, no, sit down, you got a problem with me, you say it to my face. And then eventually, right before he dies, you learn he's cheating on his wife. Yeah, he's with... actually yeah he's actually married with a couple kids, and that uh, the mom is his the Andy's, Andy's mom, mom is say. like his it, lover. I would say his mistress. And... Yeah, no, the, uh, Andy's mom doesn't know anything about it because she's stupid, I guess. Well, actually, she's a she's kind of an asshole. <laughs> She's not as bad as, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Billy Batson's mom from Real Mom, or I should say Birth Mom. Yes, yes. It's not as bad as her, but almost as bad. She's kind of a dick throughout most of this movie, and it's like, I don't sympathize with her a bunch. And again, it's an issue with the movie. It's like, I don't sympathize too much with Andy. I sympathize with this plight and the fact that it's like, all right, it's kind of bad that, you know, you're having to deal with this, you know, Dead, deadly doll and everything, but he does so many stupid things. Like whenever he realizes, hey, Chucky killed the killed his soon to be not stepdad thing, mm -hmm. and leaves his head on the thing. First off, that's a really cheesy kind of thing. So why didn't we lean more into this, make it more cheesy? And also, what they kind of did was wrap it up, and they thought they were gonna hide it or something. Yeah, like throw it down the garbage. You and Mom caught him. Was like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's a present for a neighbor across the hall. Yeah, it's, it's like, oh, well, we're going to take it to her. Shit. Yeah, and it's just so many weird things, so much odd dialogue throughout this, mm -hmm. where it's like, why are you saying this, and why are you acting like this? In fact, that's the weird thing. Like, he didn't tell his mom. He's like, all right, I know you're not going to believe me, but you know where I was. Why is your fucking head here? Call the police. Nothing. I mean, like, Chucky, like, had a little bit of blood. Yeah. And I was like, just show him the doll. I was like, okay, it's got blood on him. Mm-hmm. And also, they can access his memory core and stuff like that, because I can see yeah. what he did. And it's like, what? Why oh, is you this a like, difficult problem? Usually, like, after he kills a cat, the... Like, we get to hear it. Yeah. Afterwards, you, it's like... It's like, well, thanks, movie. Fuck you. Because he can record sound, also record uh, audio and video. Yeah, and he pretty much plays back to Andy to show how much he cares about him. Him killing the cat. And it's like, okay, well, thanks, movie. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, I thought he was trying to replace the cat. And I was like, oh, really? We get, we get to hear the kid? Oh, fucking seriously? Yeah. So, yeah, that movie, this movie quickly lost mm -hmm. me on that. But, yeah, you don't win any points by killing off a beloved pet. It's like, that's... <sighs> kill off the shitty two-time boyfriend. That's fine. I, I won't even have any sympathy. It's like, go for it. But... Leave the pet alone. Keep the kitty alone. Mm-hmm. What the kitty do to you? Kitty do no shit to you. <laughs> <sighs> just... Ugh. Kitty's just eating your dick off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, like I said, there's... Too many weird spots where it's like, okay, well, you're going to destroy the doll, right? Oh, okay, no, you just... Like I said, whenever they decide to take out its battery, and then shit happens, and somehow Jack Black gets hold of it, and... Decides to power back up, and... Puts a new battery in it, and... Just gave him a new Iron Man battery. Oh, hi. 
And then... Yeah, he's wanting to resell it on eBay. Yeah. And it's so many just weird things that just don't make a whole lot of sense with all of it. And then you have this final scene that they show throughout a lot of the trailer, which is where he's kind of taking control of stuff. And you have so many stupid moments throughout it. And again, it just proves like, okay, I don't know who made these. Was it Fazbear Entertainment? Because these things are... Because eventually he's taking control of the buddy too. It's a new one. Like buddy 2.0. Yeah, never mind. They could have just used, you know, the same thing. But instead they wanted to have this teddy bear one, which just looks like... It looks like they spent five seconds gluing fur onto a Chucky model. I was say, it's supposed to be like a werewolf one. Like there's... Yeah, it's supposed to look like a werewolf, well, they say in the movie. Like, it uh, looks uh, like a teddy bear. It doesn't look anything like a teddy bear. It even look like a teddy ruxpin. Yeah, there's Buddy 1.0, is just the little redhead. Chucky. Yeah, and then with Buddy 2.0, you get werewolf Chucky. You get a blonde. You get a little uh, black version of him. There's like a couple other different varieties. And... Yeah, and, and somehow... Oh my god, I can't believe I really had to explain this again. <sighs> He's able to control like drones near the end and he starts flying them into people and cutting them up. Never mind the fact that most drones they have plastic rotors. I don't care how fast they're spinning, they are not going to cut you. I don't care how sharp they are or anything, they're not going to do that. You just don't have enough oomph. Hell, even a metal one, there it's probably just going to hit you a few times and either it's going to snap because it's not going to be strong enough, or what the fuck are y'all doing? Why are you making a drone that has metal blades that are that strong they're able to cut through flesh? I want to put up the part from Batman Forever with Val Kilmer whenever he's talking to Jim Carrey. It just raises too many questions. I want to know why does anybody believe this horrible corporation? They are Amazon. <laughs> and then where, again, like I said, it has to be fast bear entertainment mixed with Amazon in terms of just evilness. Because when Chucky takes over these robot or these other buddies... It's just literally ripped out of iRobot at this point. At the end of iRobot, the movie, not yeah. the book. Sorry, I couldn't get through the book. Couldn't mm -hmm. stand it. Um, there are these other buddies. Like, they are literally ripping people in pieces with their bare doll fingers. It's like, mm. yeah, or biting them and ripping out their... It's like, these things are just... A few wires and it's got to be mostly plastic and stuff like that. They don't have teeth. Unless Chucky went through and just for the last three days has just been replacing them all with sharp razor teeth. But we don't see that. <laughs> and it's like, what the hell am I watching? This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And I wouldn't mind that if it was in a cheesy movie. But this is being super, super serious. And it's just it's again Mark Hamill didn't get the memo. Yeah, and it's either he's saying, say, fuck it, I'm I'm gonna have fun with it anyway. I think he just had fun. He's like, this movie sucks. <laughs> and God, this movie sucks so much. <laughs> Ugh. Anything else you wanna add about this turd? No. <laughs> uh so what would you give it as a final score? Pardon me. Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm kind of like on the fence. It's like I'm, I like I'm wanting to be kind of generous and give it a two. You can do what you want, but I don't know if it it actually earned that two. I don't think it did, but you know that's personal opinion on me. Hmm. I'm too nice. I'm gonna give it a two. So hi. Again, I'm willing to for at least give it some space from the original. At least the original is like uh, at this point it's nearly or I want to say it's over a little over thirty years old. And I get it's like the original's hammy as shit. In fact, the entire series got really weird. Though I will say some of the remake stuff, or not really remake, reboot stuff, mm -hmm. the Curse of Chucky and all that other stuff that they've been doing, 
has actually been seemingly a lot, a little bit creepier, a little bit better. It's actually been leaning into the horror and toning down on some of the camp that right to Chucky, see a Chucky and Irish are kind of made as their forte. You know, I don't know why it's like we get this like middle ground movie that doesn't understand really what it wants to do, and on top of everything, it just doesn't have enough of a either it hasn't doesn't have enough budget or it doesn't have enough people behind it that really care to give us a good movie. Hell, it even does the lame not jump scares where mm -hmm. it just has to play a loud bang noise and it's just the mom coming into the room and suddenly. And it's like, fuck you, movie. You're doing the same bullshit every other cheap-ass horror flick mm -hmm. that gets straight to Netflix anyway. With It's like, just be that, you know? Just be the cheap-ass horror flick. It only came out in theaters simply because it wants to play off the name Child's Play. Mm -hmm. But other than that, this, this movie's mm -hmm. fucking terrible. It is a one. I I yeah. don't see a reason you need to watch this. No. Go watch, uh, Vendors in game re release. That was just coming back out again. Oh, yeah, just stay away from this. If, if you're a fan of the original, I know this is not going to make you happy. But if you are interested because you did like the original but you didn't think it was the best movie ever, you're going to be really bored, I think. This is just, it's not interesting enough. There's just nothing that holds this movie together and nothing comes together as a cohesive whole. And the only thing this movie is, is a whole. Oh. Hip or heart? Yeah, it might be tripping on it. <laughs> oh, but hey, that's our opinions on Child's Play. We'll be back next week, though, with probably yesterday. We might go see Adventures in Game of Kids and be re released. Yeah, can't be as. No matter how bad yesterday is, it can't be as bad as Child's Play. Makes it bite your tongue. Still, I'm going to go see in-game re-release. Oh, we'll probably still go see it. <laughs> I was like, I'm curious. Like, what all did y'all cut out of this film and made three hours that y'all are now putting it back in and making it, what, four hours? I'll explain it to you here in a second. <laughs> but hey, we'll see y'all next next week with something. Maybe we're going to be talking about Avengers and hey, there's some thunder probably here in a second. Sorry, it's been storming. Texas, the, nature hates us right now because we sold Whataburger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey, we'll see y'all next week. So until then, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.